we are, if you like, the EU's, although it's not the EU, it's many, all the companies that trade together and interact. We are their largest client. They sell us far more than we sell them. And th there is no question that were we to leave the political construct of the EU, our trade and jobs would continue exact, exactly well, as is. Well, you, you, you would hope so, but I, I think... Well, why wouldn't it? Sorry. The point I'm trying to make is that at a time when we've had this terrible recession mm -hmm. and that we have a recovery which even the Prime Minister describes as fragile, mm -hmm. you would not want to knock that in any way with a game-changing move like withdrawal. But if we were to have a referendum, because we, we would reach this position via a referendum of the people, which was incidentally promised by all three parties uh, to the people, um, we would have a referendum campaign, obviously, and we would be able to explain um, precisely why leaving the European Union can only be of huge benefit. Don't forget that the the, the, the Taxpayers' Alliance have put the cost, at our, uh, the overall cost of our EU membership at up to £120 billion. And that's a huge figure in the context of the economy. Worse than that, you're looking at the, the, the failed main parties now vying with each other to save, I don't know what it is, £7, £11 billion from public expenditure. But what is the sum of money we send in cash every year, part of the £120 billion? It, it's £16 billion. Okay, I'll give you two billion of that for our agriculture, if you like. But that is the gross figure. The figures I have show the net cost of membership of four billion. No, the net cost of membership next year is going to be ten billion. And it, is already, it was 6.4 billion, uh, according to the Pink Book, uh, last year. In, 2000, in fact, in, in, in 2008, the, the, the net cost was 6.4 billion. And let's look forward. I mean, there's, the, 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 uh, there is no doubt that next year the net cost. That's not that I gave you the gross cost, but the net cost is going to be 10 billion. And that's 27 million pounds a day. Uh, we are talking huge figures here, which the failed main parties, the failed old parties, well, I've decided to stop calling them the main parties, the, the, the failed old parties just don't want to discuss. Well, in September 2008, the Treasury made a statement on the EC budget and said the UK's gross contribution was just under 10 billion pounds for the year. Um, it was expected that the net figure after receipts would be four billion. Yeah, but you're, that you were looking two years ago then, and I, I'm looking now at the latest Pink Book figures, which I, I, I can show you, and they show that the net figure um, in, in last year was 6.4 billion, and next year is going to be 10. Don't forget, we're going to be losing our rebate. Now, it obviously depends what happens to the pound and the euro and all that. I mean, all right. uh, but all this shows, surely, what this really shows is that at the very least, we should have a serious, independent cost-benefit analysis. Well, and that, 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 that all the three, none of the three main parties want. Let me suggest to you what would be some cost. Some would be economic. Some would be political. Uh, this country has benefited hugely from. Uh, foreign direct investment. We have the second largest stock of a foreign investment of any country in the world. It would surely affect the investment decisions of major corporations, particularly if they were thinking, as many have, of using Britain as an aircraft carrier into the continental Europe, that if we would withdraw, they would think, we're not going there. I mean, to advocate your position, you should really be mayor of Dublin because Dublin would benefit enormously. Well, but, but hold it. Don't forget, this is what they told us about not joining the currency. They said if we didn't join the euro, inward investment was going to dry up. And anyone who, 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 who has lived in international business knows that our membership of the European Union doesn't, as such, does not affect um, uh, inward investment. What, yes. what, what, it, what is affected, what, what, what does encourage is, is the fact we talk English, the time zone we're in, uh, and of course the fact that we have free access to the market which we would, so, we would, we would keep. Uh, it's, would you hope. It's well, seriously it, your decision yep. mm. that if we were to withdraw from the EU that would make no difference to the investment decisions of international multinational companies. Absolutely, and over time, over time um, our position would improve because we would get rid of all the over-regulation uh, which is forced on us by, um, by Brussels and the figure I gave you of £120 billion a year includes a figure which comes from the Commission itself, from Mr. Verhuygen, uh, of half of that figure is over-regulation and all the costs that come from it. So well, actually we, we, say, we say that it would, be, it would set us free. It would be immensely advantageous economically and it was, uh, don't forget, only 9% 
of our GDP. Only 9% of British GDP goes in trade with the European Union. 11% goes in trade with the rest of the world. And 80% stays right here in the domestic economy. Now, I'm not saying the 9% isn't important, but the fact is that the regulation from Brussels, the, the cost of, of Brussels overregulation, afflicts 100% of our economy, the whole economy. Let me those those are the figures to look at. Let me move from the corporate to the individual. Mm. At the moment, if you're British, mm. you can enjoy equal rights to study, work or retire mm. and receive health care mm. throughout the EU. Mm. We would lose that if we left. But I'm not, I'm not sure that the health care is all that easy at the moment. But could I put you in the position of Switzerland? Switzerland enjoys all the advantages that we, we enjoy. Free movement of person, free trade, free trade. I mean, I agree that when we joined the European Union, there was a substantial tariff barrier, 7 8%, and we wanted to emulate the Germans. And way back in, 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 in the 60s and 70s, there was a case uh, to join the common market. But now there isn't. The, 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 the EU's external tariff, overall external tariff, is now, I believe, below 1%. You're talking about tariffs. I'm talking about people here. Uh, you could not guarantee if we were to leave, and it may be an acrimonious split. We don't know whether this would happen yeah. in a friendly way uh, because the EU would see it as a great blow to the EU for a major nation like Britain to leave. Why would they have an incentive to continue to, to uh, give us the right to study, work, retire, receive health care in the EU when we want none of the responsibilities? But why would they take it away from us? Because we're not a member of the club. N no, but that's, th 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 it's just as much in their advantage to send their students here and all the rest. It's a reciprocal arrangement. Nothing would change. No trade barriers would be set up. This is a myth. This is a myth that the political class, I'm afraid, believes that were we simply to repeal the treaties of Rome, something ghastly would happen. It wouldn't. And, but you and, cannot guarantee that it wouldn't. Well, Resentment I, I, in Berlin and Paris no, could no, well no. say, Amongst, if the British well, want to go their own way, if they want to be this offshore island, that's fine. But the people cannot enjoy the free movement of capital and labor, which has been one of the greatest benefits well, of the EU. We are more important economically to the European Union than Switzerland. Switzerland has those benefits. Why shouldn't we? Of course we would. They would come running after us for a free trade agreement. If we started to say we're going to start putting up barriers, they suffer much more than we. Are, we, are they going to stop selling us their wine, their cars? Of course not. This is the, in, in, in the reality of international business and trade, this is a complete shibboleth. In recent years, because of the success of the British economy, Many Europeans have come to work here, mm. and many people would say that has been not just to their benefit, but to our benefit too, sure, sure. whether it's French workers in the city of London or the ubiquitous Polish plumber. Mm. Why would you want to stop that? You want a ban on immigration, including no, EU. We, what, what, yes, of course, because we, on immigration, we think that this country is suffering from a certain amount of indigestion. And it's time we uh, digested and accommodated what we already have. And we would put um, European workers in the same category as Australian, Canadian, um, New Zealand or American workers. And we, would, we wouldn't have a total ban. We would allow people to come in on work permits who, who we wanted to have. And it, would, it might well be the same the other way around. But there are a quarter of a million French workers alone in the city of London, within 20 miles of where we are now. The city of London has uh, became the great world's financial center because of mm. Spanish mm. workers, German workers, Scandinavians coming here. Americans. Y and Americans too. You would stop that. No, we you would freeze it. No, we Why? Would. No, we would leave that as it is and say if any more well, wanted I, to come I'm in. Sorry. A five-year freeze on immigration. That's a freeze. That's not kicking them out. Well, that, no, I didn't say kick them out. No, no, no. I, I said you it. would stop any more coming in. No.